Well, it's 11 a.m. and I'm going to go ahead and start this webinar. Welcome to Blue Ridge Discovery Center and the Spring Mount Rogers Naturalist Rally Backyard Edition iNaturalist Training Webinar. So for the first time in 46 years, the rally is not going to be held in person in the Mount Rogers Natural Recreation Area, but we here do not want to go down as canceling the rally. So we are bringing the rally to you, or rather, you are sharing it with us. So it is our plan to engage with you over this time, our friends, family, donors, members, newcomers, everyone here today in this unprecedented and restricted time. Fortunately, there's no restriction to going outside, exploring your surroundings, discovering new things, and sharing them with the world. So we have found a way to bring it all together while still practicing social distancing. So as a rally participant, we encourage you to sign up for iNaturalist. It is a free website and a mobile app, if you have not done so already. And we want you to join us in submitting observations over a 10 day period, beginning at 1146 May 1st through 1146 on May 10th. So we have created a project within Nine Naturalists called the Mount Rogers Natural Slide Backyard Edition. We want you to join this project and start submitting observations. And each day we will share highlights from the day before, and we will also create journal entries sharing information about special organisms. You will also be eligible each day for a daily prize, one of our BRDC species t-shirts. If you go online and purchase raffle tickets, if you haven't already, you will also be not only supporting the Naturalist Rally, but you will also be in the drawing for additional great prizes. Finally, as a registered rally participant, you are also invited to all of our webinar events that will be taking place. Right now we have nine more set up and they will begin um, on the 1st at 11 a.m. We will have our rally kickoff with our director, Aaron Floyd and uh, naturalist, Kay Campbell. And then on Friday night, as we have historically done with our rallies, we will have a guest speaker that evening. Um, Barbara Kingsolver will be joining us at 7 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, we have multiple guides that will be joining us throughout the day, both days, and providing various webinars. And you can go online at any time and view our schedule on the website. So during this webinar, you are going to um, be able to participate in various ways. And one of the ways is participating in a poll. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually launch a poll right now. And this is about um, whether or not you have used iNatural support before or if you have a count. So I'm going to launch that poll. And what I would like for you to do is to answer these questions, yes or no. I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Wow, this is awesome. So it looks like we have 90% um, of you, or 28 people today, 90% have, are interested in um, iNaturals and have an iNaturals account. So that is awesome. All right, so I can share those results. You can see here how many people have and how many people do not. Awesome, thank you. So also you will see on your screen that you will be able to chat and we will be monitoring that chat and following with your chat and conversations. And then we will also be going to um, have a question and answer. So we will be monitoring that as well. I will also have hopefully Kate Campbell and um, Dennis Ross will also be monitoring that question and answer and be typing in some answers throughout the webinar if you have. At the end, we'll also finish up with a Q&A with um, Alan and then possibly be able to walk through some of the steps um, through the iNaturalist training. All right, so we want you to interact with us th there. So let me introduce our presenter today, Mr. Alan Boynton. Alan is a retired wildlife biologist living in Troutdale, Virginia. He is an avid bird watcher and also enjoys hiking, camping, fishing, photography and nature study. He has worked for both the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission and the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries for 39 years. 
Alan has participated in many of our Mount Rogers Naturalist Rally events and joined the iNaturalist community in 2015. He has recorded over 2,000 observations and made over 11,000 identifications to date, mostly of birds, mammals, wildflowers, and butterflies. Who else to better get us started using iNaturalist? Welcome, Alan. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. And um, I will uh, get started here. Uh, I hope you can see the screen. Okay. Uh, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for uh, your interest in Mount Rogers Naturalist Rally. And I'm so happy that we were going to be able to um, uh, do this this year. And uh, thanks to the Blue Ridge Discovery Center for organizing all this. Uh, the Backyard Edition goals, are, of course, are to continue the tradition of the rally, to explore nature near our homes, and to share our findings with others. So um, this dovetails really nicely with iNaturalist, which is a virtual community uh, for everyone, really, whether you are an ecologist at a research institution or uh, a teenager chasing animals in your backyard um, or nearby, why uh, iNaturalist is for you. It's a great tool. I've used it for about five years now. The, the more I use it, the more I love it. I probably spend too much time on it. And um, so the purpose is to organize and record nature findings of the iNaturalist community to learn about our natural world and to meet other nature enthusiasts. So today what we're gonna do, uh, which many of you have already done, is learn how to make an iNaturalist account to uh, join uh, the Backyard Edition project how to make an observation, and how to use iNaturalist to learn and explore. So making an account is really easy. Uh, all you've got to do is put in your uh, email address, a username, a password, uh, verify you're not a robot, and that's it. Joining the project is a little bit more involved, uh, but you'll want to do that. Um, the, um, once you sign on to iNaturalist at iNaturalist.org uh, and you have an account, it will take you to your home screen or your dashboard. And from there, you'll see uh, across the top menu uh, the home page tab, the search tab, the explore tab, the tab for your observations, and a community tab. So if you choose the community tab, um, on the second menu item of the drop down menu is projects. You type or you uh, choose that, uh, you uh, get a search bar, uh, you you type in uh, Mount Rogers Natural Rally Backyard Edition, you'll get a search result, uh, choose that, and uh, that will take you to the project page. And the project um, uh, has in the top right-hand corner, a join uh, button and choose that. It'll ask you, uh, do you want to receive updates from this project, which I would think you would for the period um, uh, of May 1st to 10th, you'll get notifications of activity on the project in your dashboard. Choose to join and you should see that the number increases by one and be able to view all members and see in fact that you have joined. And that's really all you've got to do to participate in the project other than make observations, which is what we're going to talk about next. Um, but uh, you don't really have to add your observation to the project. Uh, it will just, the project will, when you make an observation, if it's in the, the project area um, or you are a member of the project, uh, it will um, 
add you automatically, add your observation automatically, that is. So right now, um, we're gonna look at a couple videos. iNaturalist has a great help section. It's got tutorial videos and also extensive list of um, frequently asked questions. So we're going to look at two different videos. One is uh, a video of how to make observations using your mobile app. And uh, the next one, which we'll go right into, is how to use the photo uploader on iNaturalist web page. Uh, and um, af after we view those, um, we'll go into a little more detail, uh, particularly at the, at the towards the end of the presentation about some of the um, interesting things about making observations. So uh, bear with me now while I start the video. Okay, so you've installed the iNaturalist app and created an account. Time to get outside and record your first observation. Here's how to do it. Alan, turn it up just a little bit. Any living thing like a plant, animal, or fungus can be an observation on iNaturalist. How's that? Good. Once you find something you'd like to record, just tap observe and take a photo. You can review your picture, then hit next if it looks good. To identify it, hit what did you see? If you have an internet connection, iNaturalist will suggest 10 visually similar species and often a common ancestor. You can choose one of those or search for a species name. On this observation detail screen, you can add more photos of the same organism or write a note. The date, time, and location have been automatically added. You can also change the geo-privacy of the observation, mark whether it's captured or cultivated, or add it to a project. Once you're finished, just hit share and your observation will be uploaded for everyone to see and identify. That's it. Keep on exploring and sharing. Okay, uh, that, that's the first. Um, and that pr procedure is pretty much the same for um, iPhones and Android. And now we'll go to the second. This video is a quick introduction to our web uploader, which allows you to upload, combine, and batch edit photos and sounds, then submit them to iNaturalist. I've got a few photos and a sound I'm going to use as examples, so let's get started. To get to the uploader, I can click on the green upload button in the header. And from here, I can drag and drop the photos I want to upload, or choose them from a menu. I'll go with the former option for this video. Once I've dragged in my photos and sounds, iNaturalist will import each one as a card in the main workspace here. Keep in mind the photos have not been added as observations in iNaturalist just yet. That won't happen until you hit the green submit button in the upper right hand corner. We recommend not adding more than about 50 files at a time to the uploader page. Now that the observation cards are all in my workspace, I can start editing their information. I can edit a single observation by clicking on it and entering information either directly on the card or in this area on the left hand side. You'll see that geo privacy, captive cultivated, Tags, projects, and observation fields are all on the left-hand side as well. To add an identification, I can click in the species name field and our naturalist will suggest visually similar species. Or I can begin typing in a comment or scientific name and choose from the drop-down menu. There's no sound recognition software on our naturalist, so you'll have to type in the species name. To add or edit location information, I'll click on the location space here. You'll see that a location editor pops up and I can type a place into the search bar at the top. Note that this will not search iNaturalist curated places. It's simply a Google Maps name search. And from here, I can pick a point and drag these control dots on the circle to show the accuracy level of my location. Once I'm done here, I'll click Update Locations to get back to my workspace. If you often make observations at the same location, such as a dive site or your backyard, you can save it to your account as a pinned location. Once you have the correct coordinates, accuracy, geo-privacy setting, and notes in these fields, click on the pin button and the location will be saved. You can access it by clicking on your pinned locations 
right here. Now, these two photos are the same organism, so I want to combine them into one observation. I can either select them both and click Combine up at the top, or drag one card into the other, and voila, they've been merged into one. I had already added location and species name in the photo's metadata, which iNaturalist has read, so that's all taken care of. Finally, let's say I want to batch edit my cards. I can select certain cards with my mouse, or hit Select All up at the top. Once I've selected the observations I'd like to edit, I can use the forms on the left-hand side to do so. Anything I enter on the left-hand side will affect all the cards I have selected. Now that I've edited everything I want to here, I just have to hit Submit and they will be added to the iNaturalist database. I hope this video will help you streamline your workflow. Happy iNetting. Okay, so uh, was everybody, uh, Lisa, were, it was that, those videos play okay? Yep, I, they seem great on my end. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, next we're gonna talk about how to make an observation, and, and what is an observation exactly? Well, it's a record of an encounter with an organism at a particular time and place. Quite often you'll see um, people make the mistake of adding a bunch of different photographs as different um, observations, and it's really of the same species at the same time and place. And you, you don't want to do that. You want to put all those photographs in a single observation, and uh, there's several ways to do that. One of those if it is uh, described in the uploader video that we just watched where you combine them as you're submitting them. But if you want to add a photograph later, you can use this little icon down here below the picture uh, and um, add it that way. So once you've added an observation, uh, it will um, appear uh, in the iNaturals database uh, as a, uh, and and you can look at your observations on the tab we saw before. And uh, that uh, page is one that is used frequently. It, it gives you, it's a portal really to a lot of different information uh, in the database. Uh, and so I'm gonna go over that page in some detail. Uh, this is what it looks like. So at the top, of course, is the name and um, Right here is the uh, the status of your observation has been verified or not. So uh, in in this case, it has been. There's a in the right hand corner is a blue uh, button that you can use to edit if you need to make some corrections to the observation. Then you have your photos uh, or um, access to a sound recording, or uh, if, if you've made a sound recording, a map which will show where it's located and you can check that for um, several things. Then a list of, um, here's a list of uh, activity that has been uh, recorded about your observation and some other information here. So, <clears throat> The activity uh, is, is mostly uh, done through Identify, uh, where people are reviewing observations as they're submitted and um, then verifying or suggesting alternative identifications. Of course, Northern Cardinal is uh, easily recognized and um, was, you know, quite soon uh, verified. and. Uh, one thing that I often use um, the activity uh, menu or uh, record here is to look at the profiles of people uh, and when there's some discussion about the identity, um, it's interesting to uh, look at people's backgrounds. It helps you evaluate uh, uh, the, their um, suggestions. Uh, Research grade, um, 
just means that it's been verified by two thirds or more of the people who have made identifications. And um, so uh, also this will show um, a list of projects that uh, your observation has been uh, included in. And uh, you might wanna check that to see that it has been included in the backyard edition project. One other thing I often do is, is look at the map because I, I'm interested in what other uh, observations have been made in the area of the same species. And this is also a good way to uh, see uh, what other naturalists are uh, in your area and that have made the observations of the same species. And um, for example, uh, USMC Fire Medic is uh, in Marion. I see their uh, observations posted frequently of birds and wildflowers and so forth. And I've never uh, met this observer, but um, hope to one day. Um, another page I often use is the species page. So <clears throat> on your identifications, you'll notice there's a avatar of the species, um, that's a photograph, you know, somebody has submitted, but if you click on that, it will take you to the species page. And that's got, that's really a portal to a lot of different information about the species that can be helpful in making an identification and also learning about the species. So I use this page all the time. And I'll go over that. Uh, again, the name at the top, uh, this section in the top left-hand corner gives access to photographs of the species um, that have been submitted. Uh, in the top right-hand portion of the page is um, information about the top observer. In this case, it's J.T. Martin, this guy down in South Carolina, um, who's made over 500 observations of cardinals. Uh, when the last observation was submitted to the database, who the top identifier is, which is Sam Biology, who's a, a biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife Departments, very active eye naturalist. And then the total number of observations in the database of Northern Cardinals, which is over 46,000. This is also a quite interesting uh, histogram of different things. One is the seasonality of the observations in the database. You can see, see there's a peak in April, well, of course, that uh, coincides with the breeding season and when they're uh, very detectable because they're singing and so forth. And the number of observations drops off, uh, but uh, then starts to pick up in November and December, which um, coincides with observations at feeders. So I think that's sort of interesting. And uh, you can also look at the history um, uh, the timeline of observations, submitted life stages, sex, and for flowers, the phenology, and so forth, which is, can give you a good idea of bloom time in your area. So uh, that's a very useful thing. And then the map uh, for the species that are uh, readily observed, um, the, the uh, map shows the, all the distribution of all the observations in the iNaturalist database, which in this case pretty well delimits the whole range of the species. And then there's uh, some tabs across the middle of the page here that um, give access to other uh, bits of information. One is the about um, tab, which takes you through the Wikipedia article of the species, and that can be uh, pretty extensive in, in the case of a uh, commonly observed species like the northern cardinal. Or for a very rare species or cryptic species, it might be very little or even no information. Here on the right sidebar is a, a list of hyperlinks to some great um, sources of information. One I particularly like is Xenocanto, which um, is a database of uh, sounds and, and um, photographs uh, of birds all over the world. It's, it's uh, particularly used by Eurasian birders. Uh, then 
There's a taxonomy page, which has great information. This is um, imported from uh, other databases, so it's um, uh, pretty much up to date. And <clears throat> you can see for the Northern Cardinal, list all the subspecies of Northern Cardinal that are currently described. Uh, you can go up in this hierarchy uh, choosing um, uh, hyperlinks. So you could look at all the uh, species in the genus or all the genera and species in the family. And that's kind of neat uh, to do. Uh, the status tab shows you something about the uh, ranking and conservation status for in different databases. And it also gives you an idea of where a species is introduced or not. So you can see in Bermuda and and the whole list is not displayed here, but uh, it's also true for Hawaii. Uh, Northern Cardinals have been introduced in both places, but of course here in North uh, Virginia, North Carolina area, it's uh, native. And then um, another uh, part of the page I use all the time is a similar species page. So if I'm you know, not sure about the identity of a species and, and want to uh, look at uh, what I could, what, what people frequently misidentify this species as, uh, I look at this. So in, in this case, it's another species in the genus, uh, which is Pyroloxia. And there have been 60 misidentifications of Pyroloxia as Northern Cardinal. Uh, of course, Pyroloxia um, occurs in Southwestern United States and is not in our area. But you can see other species that are frequently misidentified as northern cardinals, including house finch, robin, scarlet tanager, and summer tanager, and vermilion flycatcher, and so forth. So that's a, that's a useful part of this page. Another cool thing about iNaturalists is the, is the community. So <clears throat> there are all kinds of people. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly how many members there are. It goes up all the time, but um, the, it, it, the community ranges from, from children that are just getting into uh, nature and, and uh, species identification to uh, people that are really the top experts in the world in their, in their particular taxa of interest. And so um, one cool thing about iNaturalist is being able to talk to people. And um, there's a couple ways to do that. One is on the observation page. So using as an example, this, this is um, an observation that uh, one of our uh, community, Mount Rogers Naturalist Rally community, Cade Campbell posted this the other day about an injured Corvid, uh, which he was curious whether it was a, a fish crow or a, an American crow. And uh, I, I made a comment. So you can make comments um, on an observation page uh, in addition to identifications. And um, so I made a comment and, and Kate answered me and then someone else um, chime in here. And so that's one way you can communicate with people. And another way is to uh, click on the avatar of the observer or one of the people that have been active on this observation uh, and go to their profile. And then you can um, send uh, the, the observer um, a message. It's, it's a private message. Anything that you would put on the observation page would be public. And so that's sort of a public conversation. But if you wanted to, to make a private conversation, uh, you can use this message from the profile to do that. So um, the iNaturalist is, is really um, great for citizen science. Uh, there are a lot of different projects. And uh, I would encourage uh, you, if you get into it, to explore the projects in your area and to um, uh, get involved in the ones that you're interested in. So uh, the what I'm going to 
show you right now is a video of um, from the help section of how to explore iNaturalist data. And uh, so if you'll bear with me, um, I'll get that started. Start by visiting iNaturalist.org and click Observations from the top menu. When you first visit the Observations the page, okay? all observations of all species from around the world are displayed. The count summarizes the total number. The individual observations appear as gray markers and as a list with the most recently posted observations listed first. At the top of the page are filters that we will use to narrow down this set of observations in a few moments. But first, let's explain how the rest of the observations page is structured. The page summarizes observations matching your filters as four separate counts. The count of the observations themselves, the count of the species that these observations represent, the count of the people who identified the observations, and the count of the people who made the observations. Each of these counts activates a tab which provides more information about what's driving them. Let's start with the Observations tab, which is active by default. These raw observations can be viewed as a map, as a grid of photos, or as a list. As you zoom and pan around the map in the Observations tab, you will see dense concentrations of observations in places where the iNaturalist community is most active. If you zoom in far enough, the gray markers will be replaced with markers with different colors and shapes, reflecting the taxonomic category, quality, and geoprivacy of the observation described in the map legend. You'll also notice the places of interest and redo search in map buttons, which can be used to add location filters. We'll describe how these work when we explain filters shortly. Activating the Species tab summarizes the observations matching your filters as the distinct set of species that they represent. The most frequently observed species are displayed first. Worldwide, House Sparrow is the most frequently observed species on iNaturalist. You can click through to learn more about them. The Identifiers tab summarizes the observations matching your filters by the people who've helped identify them. These identifiers are ranked by the number of identifications they've added. So far, Kevin Hinsa and Greg Lasley have each added around 100,000 identifications for the iNaturalist community. Similarly, the Observers tab summarizes observations by the people who observed them. Observers are ranked by both the number of observations and the number of species they represent. Fanatic has observed over 37,000 observations representing nearly 5,000 distinct species. You can click on people to learn more about them, message them, or follow them. Connecting with top identifiers and observers is a great way to learn more about observations that interest you. Now let's talk about filters. The two main ways to filter observations are by species and by location. To add a species filter, just type in and select the name you want. This will filter the observations accordingly and the counts will update to reflect this restricted set of observations. Worldwide, over 11,000 distinct species of butterflies and moths have been observed and Painted Lady is the most frequently observed species. To add a location filter, start typing a street address and select one of the return choices. Notice that the world has been replaced by bounding box and an orange bounding box is displayed around the street address. You can also generate a bounding box manually from the position of the map by clicking the Redo Search in Map button mentioned earlier. Try clicking the Find My Current Location button to position the map on your current location. And then click Redo Search in Map to see if there are any observations of butterflies and moths near you. 
Now, try entering California into the location filter. This will filter not by a square bounding box, but rather by the state of California. This is because the location matched an iNaturalist place. You can also use the Places of Interest button mentioned earlier to view and select nearby places. These places are separated into a standard set, maintained by iNaturalist, and a community curated set, added by the iNaturalist community. In the Other Filters menu, there are many more filters to choose from. For example, you can search by date or filter only research grade or threatened observations. When you choose one of these filters, a badge will display on the Filters menu to remind you that you've applied a filter. Note that iNaturalist filters only verifiable observations by default. This excludes observations of pets and others that aren't candidates to become research grade. Uncheck this if you want to include these casual observations. There's also a handy button here to reset all filters and a tool to download observations in a variety of formats. Thanks for watching! We hope exploring these observations will inspire you to get outside and share your own observations. We're looking forward to seeing what you find. Okay, now uh, I need a little feedback here. Lisa, were you able to hear that okay, the video? Yes, I heard it very well. Okay, great. Um, uh, okay, so I'm heading towards the end of the presentation here. I wanted to, to point out two things that, uh, about exploring observations. One you can do from your phone, there's an explore, um, menu item accessible through your menus up here in the top left hand corner which uh, will show you all the iNaturalist observations uh, around your location which this is around where I live in Troutdale and you can look at it on a map and zoom in and, and so forth just like you would on any of the iNaturalist maps and uh, you can see there's been a lot quite a few observations in this area and, and then you can switch to um, a gallery of the op more recent observations and uh, so that's kind of cool you know when you're traveling in unknown uh, territory including overseas you can access all kinds of great information in their database based on your location uh, so that's a neat feature Another is now you can do this from the desktop version and, and um, not your phone. So there are quite a few great things about iNaturalist that you can just get to through the desktop. And I would encourage you to, to use the desktop uh, portal uh, in addition to your phone. But here, uh, what I've done is a search on a place name and this is the place name in iNaturalist places. Uh, uh, near a place nearby that I'd like to spend more time in exploring and that is Rock Castle Gorge which is up on the edge of Floyd County and, and Franklin County and um, so it'll show you a, a gallery of of the uh, species in that area and um, so that's another neat feature and um, I, I also uh, want to direct your attention again to the iNaturalist help. If you are like me, um, I'm not a, a person that reads the manual first. Uh, I just started using iNaturalist uh, from the desktop and, and my phone, first from the phone, and uh, I, I sort of learned the hard way. Uh, but I would encourage you to, to um, spend a little time looking at this, particularly at the video tutorials uh, ones I would call your attention to are how to take an identifiable photo, which we didn't watch, how to use the identify page, which is a lot of fun. Um, this is where you help uh, verify the sightings that other people have made in the community. So that's great. Also, uh, my, my camera has a GPS built in, but 
many DSLRs do not. And, and so this is how to geotag photos in the field, which could be helpful. Um, and then uh, there's quite an extensive list of frequently asked questions. Uh, this is just the list about observations and there are many different topic areas. So if you run into a problem, you can look at these. Um, during the period of, of May 1st through May 10th, uh, if you'd like to message me, if you run into a problem and need some help, you're welcome to. And um, I, I'm sure there are other people in our community, Mount Rogers Naturalist Rally community that can help you. One of the BRDC staff, um, I, I'm sure would be able to help. So you're welcome to contact me if, if you need a little help. And you can you can access me uh, through my profile page on our naturals. So right now, what I want to do is is go into um, our naturalist. So let me share my, share that screen. And um, so, Alan, you're you're um, on my end. It has gotten very grainy. It might just be the service on your your internet service and speed on your end. I don't know if there's any way we can rectify that, just letting you know. When you say granny, what do you mean? Just poor, poor visible reception. Um, that looks a little better. Okay. I, I, I think it's just the internet service. All right. Well, I hope it improves. Um, but th this again is, is the project page, but what I'd like to do is to, um, show, show you a little more detail about, uh, how to, um, add observations. So we're going to do that and, and I'll call your attention to this upload button uh which is on all the iNaturalist uh pages in their website um are you able to see that right there lisa the yes yeah it looks upload. much better it's much better right now okay great so uh we we saw this in the video so uh, this will take us to a page you'll recognize from the video. And I'm going to add a couple observations and use those as a way to um, discuss a couple points that I hope will be helpful. So I've added two observations just by dragging them from my uh, file explorer over to the iNaturalist web page. And uh, so this, this looks pretty familiar. So let's, let's uh, look at this one first. One of the first things that I do is to check the map. I'm not going to do that because of the bandwidth. You know, it takes a little while to, to load a map sometimes, and I don't want to bog down our webinar with that. But I like to look at the map, make sure that the location is plotted correctly, even though my phone for, um, and my camera have GPS capability and record a location, their location where I'm standing. And um, you remember during our uh, field trip up to <clears throat> Burke's Garden, we saw a rough leg talk and we took photos from the road and so forth, but we were hundreds of yards from where the hawk actually was. So sometimes you, you uh, will want to go in and adjust your uh, observation location from where you were standing to where the, the uh, species actually was. So um, I want to talk a little bit uh, about uh, the artificial intelligence and photo recognition and species suggestions that iNaturalist uses, which are really quite amazing. Uh, it's amazing how um, accurate that system is. However, there are a couple of um, things to note about it that I think will help you. 
So first is if you click in that species name box, whether it's on your phone uh, or on the website, it's going to pull up a uh, list of suggestions. And quite often that is divided into two parts. One is, is that uh, we're pretty sure it's this. And the other is, uh, and it, here are our top suggestions. Well, it's pretty sure that this uh, yellow rumped warbler uh, is in the genus um, that it's in. And um, of course that's the top species and it's, it's, it's a, not a difficult species to identify. This is a male and breeding plumage, and I know that's what it is. But I want to point out down here, the third suggestion is a new Holland honey eater. And if you'll look further down in the list, there's another honey eater. And also uh, a, a black-throated gray warbler, which would be very rare here. They're sometimes seen here, but they're really a Western species. And um, so it, it's using their photo database of, of species from all over the world. So sometimes you'll get, you know, species that does, just don't make any sense whatsoever. So you, you just can't take um, for, you know, it, you can't assume that it's always accurate. So I have seen some lists where it doesn't, the species that it is, which I know what it is, it's not even in their suggested list. But in this case, we will choose yellow rumped warbler and, and put that in there. And, and so we're done with that. And the next one I want to talk about is <clears throat> this photo of a violet that I took um, down at Rural Retreat Lake the other day. It's, it's a yellow violet. And um, I thought, well, it, I'd be able to identify it pretty easily. And you'll see again that iNaturalist says, well, we're pretty sure it's in this genus, Viola. Um, and the top suggestions are downy, yellow violet, and round leaf violet. I knew it wasn't halberd leaf violet because I'm familiar with that. But I, I thought, I didn't realize that it would, would uh, be two other ones. And um, you can access the species page by choosing view here. And um, so it will open that up in a new tab. And uh, you can then go back and you have to reload the suggestions by Xing that out and clicking again in the box and it will reload the suggestions, which takes a minute sometimes. Um, and and choose another species, in this case, the round leaf violet, and we will look at that. So then we have the species uh, pages in two different tabs, and we can go back and forth and look at them, a look at similar species, read about them, and so forth, and make a decision. Well, the decision I made in this case was I didn't know enough of about the species to actually photograph the, the uh, critical characters to distinguish between these two. Um, so what I would do in this situation is just identify it as to genus. Um, so I would choose violets. And then hopefully somebody else will recognize it. They're more familiar with the species or um, uh, or eventually I'll get back to the site and look at the correct characters to distinguish the two species. And, uh, and then I can go back to my observation and uh, add a more specific one. Well, now I'm going to submit these observations. And when I do, it will take me to my 
observation page, which shows me the list. And it, it shows these two observations, yellow rumped warbler, which needs ID, and, and this one, violets, which needs ID, and then all my other ones. So um, if, if we look, if we want to look at it, on this, we can just click on that observation. And it'll take us to our observation page. So another way, um, if, you're, if you've just identified something to genus or even family and, and need to work on it uh, some more, you can use this compare button in the observation page. And what that will do is, is uh, pull up the species that are similar. Um, and you can see uh, here for Wythe County, it pulls up Canada violet, Halbert leaf violet, common blue violet, Longsburg violet, you know, there's a lot of violets, right? We can make it more specific um, by searching for a different uh, place or more general by choosing state and so forth. So let's see if we can choose, I don't know if we can choose rural retreat Lake or not, we can't. But in any case, um, I wanted to, to show you you can you can filter here by place, and that's with county in this case. And you have also the source that you can filter by, and you can also. Uh, look at the family or something more general. So that's a really handy feature using that compare uh, to verify your um, observations. So with that, uh, Lisa, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and um, turn it back over to you. Okay, and you're, there you go. Um, great, wonderful. Well. We really appreciate it. We're gonna um, start letting Alan answer a few questions, but right quick, I want to um, go into um, thanking you for joining us today, of course, but I would like to, to remind you that um, officially the rally and the project starts on May 1st, and the 2nd through the 8th, we will be putting, anybody who adds an observation to the project will be pulled from that drawing in order to get the species t-shirts. Um, also too, for the rest of the week on, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we will be also, also having webinars, but I'd like to open up another poll real quick and see if you guys are willing to um, let me know, and I think you can choose more than one here, or I hope you can. I'm gonna launch a poll about the rally events that we have coming up this weekend, and if you could please check the ones that you are um, interested in attending, that would really help us out in our audience numbers. So I'm gonna launch the poll now and I'll give you a few minutes, a uh, few seconds really, to answer um, these questions. So if you could do that for me right now, that would be wonderful. Great, great, great. I'm gonna give a few more seconds to get a little bit more response. While we're doing this real quick, I also want you to make sure that you uh, continually visit our website, Facebook and Instagram for any upcoming um, rally details. And um, we will also be, we have recorded this webinar today and we will be sharing that with you and hopefully answering any more questions that you may have, um, may have. I will also be sending you out some information, connecting you to the people who can help you with the iNaturalist app. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for um, providing all this information for us. All right, so now let's go on to, um, sharing some of these questions that Alan can answer for us. So let's go to that. So I had one question 
from um, an Amelia. And Amelia wanted to know, Alan, what is the best meaning or how to, um, she'd love an explanation of the meaning of the geolocation privacy settings. Oh, okay. Um, uh, that, that's a great feature. Um, and it's for a couple of purposes. So, uh, what iNatural allows you to do, and it's automatic in some situations where a species is listed as, uh, threatened. It's some, there's some, uh, level of concern about the species and it's listed in, in, in actually a number of different lists as a species of concern or threatened or endangered and so forth, is that it will displace your observation um, location uh, into a, I believe it's a six kilometer by maybe something less um, area. So anyway, it's a substantial area which can so your your location could be some miles away from uh where it actually is and the only the only folks that could see that would be you and whoever you give permission to for example the project curators of a project um that you have added the observation to and um so um, you might want to do that around your home, for example. And so any, you, you could do that uh, using your pin location. If you made a pin location up for your home, you could say obscure these coordinates. Alan, can you share your video so we can see you? You're... Yeah. Great. Sure. Great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Now everybody can see who we're actually, who our uh, presenter is as well today. I, I probably ought to, um, you know, change my background from, from Canada. Uh, <laughs> that would to, be great. Let's, let's make it white top. So another question that Stephen had that I think you might have answered during the pr uh, presentation was, what if you do not know the species that you have? Well, uh, you could you can just leave it unidentified. I mean, you can uh, usually get it to to uh, file them or order, and that, and that's fine. Now, if if you don't put anything, it's just going to put a question mark and say unknown. So you can you can put an observation in that's just you know a plant or just I don't know what it is. It's a it's a bit of slime, <laughs> and I know it's alive, but you know. Um, I think a, a great example of that, and I'm not sure if you all have heard of this, but um, some years ago, there was a fish that was found dead on the beach uh, in California, and it happened to be, I believe the, the group of fishes was MOA, but um, it, it happened to be the second record of a Southern Hemisphere species uh, the, the biologists that found it didn't have any idea what it was um, and just put the picture up there and it was seen by an uh, expert in that group and identified as uh, the only the second observation of this species north of the equator. So, you know, some, you never know. I mean, you may, you may get no identification help whatsoever, but you might. And, uh, You'll notice once you start using it that that birds and herps are often identified within seconds, within several minutes of when you post something. But plants and um, mollusks and uh, you know some other things you could wait months before <laughs> before somebody says, "Oh, that's that's a such and such," or verifies your identification. You know, either one. Great. Here's another question from Nancy. And she says, if you want to ID both an animal and a plant or more than one plant in a photo, can you do that on the same photo or do you need to upload it more than once? You need to upload it more than once. 
So uh, often what people will do is use a um, editor to put a circle around the species they're talking about or make a reference uh, and say, you know, I, the one I saw, the, I guess it was last night, was of two blackbirds. It was a red-winged blackbird chasing a yellow-headed blackbird. And the person said, you know, identified as red-winged blackbird and said, the bird on the right, not the yellow-headed blackbird on the left, you know. Uh, so you would, each observation is of a species at a particular place and time. So if you were doing, say, a phenology study uh, of plant bloom times, uh, and say you were looking at a patch of Canada, uh, Canada Mayflower and going back to that same place and taking pictures at different points during the season to show the progress of the bloom, you know, you would make a, even though it's the same group of plants or the, even the same plant on different days, or different weeks that you visited that place, each one of those would be a different observation. Good, excellent. Um, just to clarify, I had a question about when people can actually submit their observations to the project. And the official opening of the actual project is at 11.46 a.m. on May 1st. So even though you can go to the project and join it, no observations will be accepted until that time, whenever the project actually goes live. So please, I'm encouraging you to still go out and make observations and add them to iNaturalist, but the ones that um, they will not go into the project until May 1 at that time. Also, you can make sure that when you add an observation, you can go over in that observation and add that observation to a project in a drop dropdown. Um, I'm hope, hopefully, you, the way I understand it, Alan, you can correct me about this. Once it's after the 11.46 a.m. on May 1st, will it not automatically um, go to that project if they're a member of that project? Uh, I believe the answer is yes. Okay, excellent. Um, but iNaturalist has recently uh, sort of changed how they have this, you know, set up projects uh, so uh, I'm not as familiar with this um, new type of project, but I, I do know that that happens with other projects. Excellent. So and I, I'm pretty sure as long as you have joined uh, and you have, um, a, the, the administrators have approved that, then it should go. If, I, I guess if it didn't, then you should, uh, uh, you should contact Lisa or Rachel and um, with Blue Ridge Discovery Center and and get help. Excellent. All right. Well, is there any more questions? I think that we've answered most questions that I've seen come through. Um, I think we're really good. I want to again thank you very much for participating, Alan. Thank you so much for being a part of the rally. Again, check our website, Facebook, and Instagram for um, details. Make sure to get out there and use the iNaturalist. We will make sure that we are available to you if you have any questions. And um, I want you to get outside, explore, discover, and share. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome. Thank you.